Hi there, have you ever wondered, you know, my spouse and I have a great relationship. We are best friends, but that does not correlate with our sex life. And it might be really confusing that if you feel close in many areas of your life, but you don't feel close in your sex life, you might not be able to figure it out. So that's what we are gonna unpack today. But first, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Mary Whitman Ortiz, Christian sex educator, relationship coach, author, and speaker. And I love creating this safe space that even as Christians, we can have these conversations about sex. Tune in every week. I've got new videos. I would love for you to be a subscriber and share. So let's get back to that mm, best friend to great sexual intimacy transition. What do you think is holding you back? First, I'd like to give you three types of love. And I'm going to use some Greek words. And actually, there are so many Greek words for love. Makes me want to take a trip to Greece. Um, but the three that I'm going to use might be familiar to you. And we will see how they're playing out in your life. The first one is um, phileo. So this is about friendship. This is about affection and even brotherly love. And, and if you're familiar with um, the city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania, that is the origin of the name of that city. So that's a wonderful trait of love. And yes, you do want that in your marriage. The next type of love I'm going to describe is agape. And we think of this as a selfless love, a divine love. Jesus is certainly an example of this love. And yes, we want agape love in our marriages. This is how you can see the best in your spouse. You have God's eyes of love looking at them. And I mean, it's a wonderful thing in your giving and you're not self-centered. Super important, absolutely a foundation for a fabulous connection. And all of those emotional vibes are what you want in your marriage. How do you transition over? Well, that brings me to the third type of love, and this is Eros. So we have a romantic feeling with that. It's passion-filled, and certainly this is where we get the word erotica. So it definitely has a sexual connotation. And do we want that in our marriages? Yes, yes, yes. So how do you create that feeling of passion in your sexual intimacy, even if those other things are, are going well? Well, I want to encourage you to flirt. And I'm going to give you some super practical ways to bring that to life in your marriage. But first, you might say, ooh, you know, I'm not really comfortable doing that. Maybe when you were younger, you were dating early married. That was a part of your everyday life and something happened. And truly, cut yourself some slack. <sighs> we live through 2020. Uh, we are living through 2021. You know, things are not like normal. And that extra stress can rob you from that reservoir you have to draw from to, to get to that place of fun and flirting. So everyone has had some pushback with that. But you may have some other areas that cause you hesitation or resistance. And one of those could be that you have hurt in your heart. This could be hurt from a past relationship, from a current relationship. And you know, when you have hurt, ooh, you build walls and distance. And if you have distance in your relationship, even if the other person is not even doing anything right now, um, yeah, flirting is just not gonna come to the top of your list. What's another reason you might not feel comfortable flirting? Well, there's just a lot of stigma about feeling sexy. You know, in church circles, there's just this whole idea that it's dirty 
even in marriage, there's a lot to, um, to separate with that. And really, a lot of what I do with my coaching and writing and speaking is to help you see what's really healthy. We're not just going to stay in that place of same old, same old stuck mindset. And then finally, there's a third reason you might not flirt. Hey, you might be clueless. I don't know you. I can just say you might be clueless. I wouldn't say that to a close friend. But if it's not your personality, if it's not something that you've seen done well, if you can't just ooh, picture yourself there, you need some steps. And that's what I'm here for. Here we go. Our three ways that you can flirt with your spouse in your marriage. So number one, using words. So these definitely can be words of affirmation. That is encouragement and praise and gratefulness. Everybody responds to that. Um, you can take those words a little further and let them be filled with affection. You can take them further and include some sexual innuendo that's acceptable for both of you. So that's great to have a talk if you're not sure what you would want to hear in the way of flirting and you want to ask your spouse, what do they want to hear in the way of flirting? A uh, second way you can flirt is by your touch. So yes, we want all the comfort and nurturing types of touch. We also want the playful little pets that happen when your spouse walks through the room. Maybe you'll even just, you know, bump up next to them and, and be silly and playful. That is flirting. And then in the right context, certainly privacy of your home, there can be some private touch that is um, that one step further with being playful. And then a third way that you can flirt is by your actions. So this might be planning a surprise, making all the arrangements, picking up your spouse and going on this fun date night. It might be um, acts of service or gifts. Go back to your love languages. Those are ways that you can flirt. So now you have some tips. I know it still might be a little uncomfortable for you. So if some of those hesitations to flirt really um, are happening in your life and you want help, please contact me. I'm a coach. This is exactly what I do. I help couples to overcome roadblocks to intimacy so they can create a sex life they enjoy. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And remember, Father God wants to lavish his love on every area of your life, including sexual intimacy and marriage.